Hi there, my name is Anya, and today I'm going to show you how to make realistic neck binding for t-shirt in Cloth 3D or Marvelous Designer. Having great patterns is only the first step, then you need to make your model look realistic, and I will show you how to make it from scratch. I used the basic women's t-shirt patterns from Modular Configurator, which is here, and switch on fabrics from Clock Connect store. Link to the fabrics are left in the description. But you can also use your own patterns and fabrics. You can see the simple uh, neckband is already in the bundle, but it consists of two parts, has the necessary dots and notches, so I'd like to ignore it and create the new one. Actually, I like the length of this pattern, so I want to measure it and transfer it to the, my new pattern. Let's select the top edges with Edit Pattern Tool, Z key. Go to Property Editor and under the selected line, you will see 2D line length 42 and 4 cm. We need this value. Now let's create the new pattern. Press S, Rectangle Tool, left click and write down the measured length 42 and 4 cm. It will be our width. The height I want to make 2 cm. Press OK. This is our new pattern. Let's delete the old one. Now let's attach it to the neckline with Segment Sewing tool. Press N. Select the bottom edge of the neckband so the notch will be on the left. Then press and hold Shift and select all the edges on the neckline one by one from left to right so the notches will be on the same side as on the neckband. Release Shift. You can start sewing from a different point or from right to left, but notches should always share the same direction. Select neckband with A, go to 3D window and right-click on the button. Select Superimpose Site. It will locate the neckband on the neckline regarding the sewing lines. We need to sew the sides as well. We can do it in 3D window or in 2D window with Segment Sewing tool. Press N and select the sides. Press Spacebar. It will simulate. Also, I want to apply my rib fabric to the neckband. Drag and drop it and decrease the particle distance to 5. It will divide the mesh to smaller polygons so the edges look smoother. Simulate. On the texture surface mode, which is here, this icon, you can see the wrong side of the fabric. It is black. We need to finish it and add the face inside. Usually when we sew a t-shirt, we make a folded binding. But we don't have to replicate the sewing process here. We can imitate a fold and make it from two parts to avoid collision between them. Eventually it won't be noticeable. Always try to simplify your 3D model so the computer can simulate it correctly. For this we need to add one more pattern inside of this neckband. Select the neckband with A, Transform Pattern Tool, slightly move it up into the window, then press Ctrl C, Ctrl V and place the new pattern. We've just copied that. Now we need to sew that together. Press N, Segment Sewing Tool and sew top to top and bottom to bottom parts. Select the new part, go to 3D window, right click on it and, and select Superimpose Under. It will locate the new part under the first one. Now I want to create an imitation of the seam allowance on an neckband and add internal lines for the top stitches. Select uh, the bottom edge of the inner part, right click on it and select offset pattern outline. Set the distance to 0.7 cm. It will be our seam allowance. And also check create internal line. It will add an internal line on a place where the bottom edge was before. Press OK. If you press B, edit sewing tool, you will see that the bottom sewing line was dislocated. 
It always happens when you add a part in an outline. So we need to delete it because we can't move it on internal line. So let's delete it and create the new sewing line. Also check the side seams. There is a space on a seam allowance. We need to fill it by extending the bottom point of a sewing line. Let's add internal lines for the top stitches. I will add them on a t-shirt neckline and on a seam allowance and then sew them together. Press Z edit pattern tool and select front and back neckline holding shift. Right click on a neckline, offset as internal line. Set the distance to 0.4 cm or wherever you like for the top stitch. And check extend, so the internal line reaches the pattern outline, not intersect it or stop before the line. Press OK. You can see the bunch of segment points here. I don't know why the program decided to write them instead of curve points. Let's convert them so they won't distract us in the future. Press Z, select all of them, right click on a point, convert to curve point. If we press V, Edit Curve Point tool, we can see that all of the points are curved now. Let's add the same internal line on our seam allowance. Select internal line, offset as internal line, set the distance the same as it was on our neckline, 0.4. Also check reverse direction, so this top stitch internal line will be on a seam allowance, not on a neck band. And also check extent. Press OK. Now we need to sew them together, uh, the same as uh, we did with our neckband and neckline. Press End Segment Sewing Tool, select the top stitch internal line, press and hold Shift and select all of the internal lines on our neckline. Release Shift and simulate. Spacebar. The inner parts still show us the wrong side. We need to flip the face. Select it in 3 window, right click, flip normal. Press spacebar. Now it looks correct. To avoid that glitches and collision in general, you need to set the sub layer. It is a great tool to indicate what patterns are located over or under the other patterns. Select this tool in 2D pattern window. It is here. Then select top and then bottom neckband and change plus to minus because we flipped normals for the inner part. Actually, if you don't know what to set plus to minus, just leave it plus, simulate, see that it doesn't look correct and change it to minus. Set the sub layer for the seam allowance as well so it doesn't penetrate the front and back of the t-shirt. Now let's decrease the particle distance for the neckband to make it more realistic. Make it 2 and simulate. Here you can see the top seam is visible at the moment, but we wanted to make it as a fold, as I said at the beginning. We need to delete this line. How can we do this? Each sewing line has a normal map. This normal map creates a small bump that you can see at the seam in 3D window on your clothes. We need to delete this bump. Select the sewing line with B, Edit Sewing Tool, go to the Property Editor, where you can find the 3D seam line settings. This normal map has two values, intensity and thickness. If you set both of these values to zero, the normal map will become invisible. But if you just press Delete the normal map, it will work as well. But when we uh, save our project, close it and open it, the normal map will appear again. That's why we need to set these values to zero. And here we go, now it looks like a fold. By the way, use it not only for deleting the seam lines, but also for adjusting their visibility. For example, top stitch seams always should have smaller bump than regular seams. That's why it's better to decrease the intensity and thickness for them. If we go to the render window and turn on interactive render to update our image, and wait a bit. We can see that all seams on the neck look almost the same. They are too dark and noticeable, especially this neckline seam. 
in comparison to shoulder and armhole seams. So let's adjust normal map for them. Press B, Edit Sewing Tool, and select all the neckline seams. Make sure that you selected all of them. Go to Property Editor and set thickness to 0.05. Then select all the top stitch seams and set intensity to 5 and thickness to 0.05. Turn on Interactive Render again. Here we go, now it looks more natural. You can set different values, it's all up to you. One more trick. Let's select all the internal lines and turn on fold rendering. It will emphasize our sewing lines. Also, this fold looks too round for me. I'd like to sharpen it slightly. Press B, Edit, edit Sewing Tool, select Top Sewing Line and Decrease fold angle in property editor, for example, to 120. Simulate. Here we go, now it looks more like a fold. The neck almost looks good, but I want to add a few more details. Let's add a small bump on the neckline to imitate the seam allowance inside. Select neckline and offset as internal line on a distance 0.7. Check reverse direction if needed. And offset is internal line one more time on distance 0 0.8. Convert these segment points to curve points. Select first lines and set fold angle to 170 to sharpen it. Select second lines and set the fold angle to 190 to blunt it. Simulate. Here you can see a small bump. Last but not the least, let's add the top stitches. Go to the top stitches tab in the object browser, select default top stitch, double click and rename it to single. It will be our single line top stitches. Then press K, segment top stitch tool and apply it to our internal lines. You can see that it doesn't locate it on the internal line, it's above the internal line. This is because the offset is applied. Select our single top stitches, go to Property Editor and change offset to zero. Now it is on the internal line. Also, you can adjust your top stitches here, change the length, space, thread thickness, materials, configurations, whatever you want. I want to change thread thickness to 80 and fabric type to fabric shiny, because threads always look a little bit shiny. Now let's create the overlock top stitches for the seam allowance. Select single, copy that and rename it to overlock. Change the shape to overlock and notice that the material presets were changed to default, so we need to customize it again. Press K and apply it to the bottom edge of our seam allowance. Now we need to uh, change the width to 0.7 so it cover the seam allowance and change the offset to 0.35 cm to have it above the line where we applied it. The neckline is finished. Decrease the particle distance for the rest of the t shirt for example to 5, or even lower if you want. Stimulate it. Select Thick Texture Surface Mode. And that's all. The t-shirt is ready to render. Thank you for watching guys, and I hope each of you found some useful tips here. Write in comments if you have some questions and let me know what topics you'd like to see in the next videos or what problems you face working in Claw or Marvelous Designer. Enjoy your day and see you in the next videos. Bye!